I was just telling Matt in the back how I remember watching or reading the article of you getting your sleeve done in Tam. Oh yeah. And uh, it was a big crazy thing. Yeah. But just the I, like it was like it's really profound to be working with you now. Never would have thought. Well, you know, I think that if you pick goals that are really something that you can focus your energy on, there's really nothing that's totally out of reach, you know? Right. Mm-hmm. <clears throat>
For Guy and Jeff, how do you avoid mental fatigue and remain focused during these long sessions? Take a couple <laughs> of breaks. <laughs> you know, eat. Um, I am a coffee abuser. And I just try to take on projects that are engaging enough that my interest will stay with it. And, you know, of course, as long as the client's going strong, I think that's a big part of it, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> it's, I see it as an opportunity, you know, to, to have a great session. It's funny. I, I think everything's conditioning. So I think that the more you're conditioned, you know, you start off with smaller pieces and then you get used to it as you as you do more you get more conditioned for it because it is mentally you know to concentrate this intently for that long is pretty tiring and you don't really notice it till you're done and then it kind of settles in and you can't really talk afterwards you're like kind of zoning out but it's funny i i do coffee like in the morning um but I really like vitamin B12, and I buy those little packets of B12, and I drink that spirulina. Um, I put that in water, that's what I've been drinking on all night. And it's just a natural, uh, easier energy for me than uh, a bunch of caffeine. I do caffeine in the morning, that's it. But I really do, like I take like vitamins and stuff throughout the day. and. Um, B12 is a, is a magical <laughs> vitamin. It just keeps your brain going. And Interesting. It's taken, it's taken us a little while to get here. How about any uh, celebrities that you guys have tattooed? Yeah. Not me. Hmm. A couple musicians, you know. Uh, I just tattooed Sylvester Stallone. I've had calls from a couple celebrities, but... <clears throat> oh yeah, Jesse James, I guess he counts. Yeah. It seems like high profile people, really wealthy people, they're, they're hard to deal with, you know, they, they're pretty demanding and as far as like, they want you to go to them, they want... It's just not easy. It's just never easy. Jesse was great to work on, but I did, you know, I did it in his kitchen. Overlooking the beach, I mean, it didn't suck, you know? But it's not something I could do now with the family and everything. When I tattooed Sly, he flew my whole family down to L.A. and oh. put us up in the Beverly Hilton. And he was super nice, super generous. Um, it didn't go the way I thought it was going to go, but all in all, it was a good experience. Didn't go the way you thought it was going to go? No. Which was? Uh, well, he had asked for a back piece. He wanted a full back piece, and then... I drew up about six of them, and when I got there, um, there were all these marks on his back where his spouse had pretty much said, don't go here, 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 or here, or here, <laughs> or here. Okay, so you had about a quarter of the back to work with. Yeah, it, was just a, it just wasn't what I expected, and it just didn't go. I didn't have the freedom that I was told would be there. But all in all, I learned a ton, and he was he was great to talk to, and I learned a lot from him. But as far as like it being a portfolio piece or something, that never happened. Here's a question for Jeff: Why did he decide to start running, and how has that helped his tattoo? Um, well, I just was tired of feeling like shit and uh, tired of being overweight and just in general just uh, just feeling unhappy with myself. 
And it's actually helped quite a bit in my tattoos because it's for one giving me a lot more focus, it's given me a lot more um, mental focus and physical ability, like my back doesn't hurt after tattooing all day, you know, um, I'm just stronger and all in all I feel better. Yeah, physical strength is, of course that, that's going to translate to helping your tattooing because I mean, think about today, you know? This is not a small thing to, to sit down and do. Yeah. It's funny, it's, it's again back to conditioning because um, I ran uh, just about almost four miles today. I logged uh, 3.8 miles and um, it was just more like a fun run, you know? But I would, I felt, I feel better today doing that. I would recommend exercise. <laughs> it's funny because I would, I didn't exercise for 20 years. Nothing. I hurt my back years and years ago, and uh, I just didn't do anything at all. I couldn't do anything. I, I would try snowboarding and I was in such bad shape that I, I couldn't walk for days after it. I just, I tried surfing or whatever. Any of those things was just super hard. But if you were, to, if someone were to try to tell me five years ago, hey, you should exercise. I just sort of laughed at him, which I did. I actually went to the doctor because I was having all kinds of anxiety. I couldn't sleep. And my, I was telling my doctor, like, I can't sleep at night. My mind's going crazy. Um, I get anxiety. I was having little panic attacks during the mornings. And he looked at me and he said, you need to exercise. He said, if you exercise for six weeks, you wouldn't need anything. And I told him I was not going to exercise. Like, I flat out was just like, that's not going to happen. So he prescribed um, antidepressants, uh, anti-anxiety medicine, and sleep aids. And they made me worse off. I was, it was terrible. And I tried those for about a year. I was on four different medications, and I felt terrible. And then I, I was so tired of feeling like that that I just started exercising and within a couple months I was off all that medicine. Yeah, there's no pad magic pill to replace health. if it's about learning new techniques so much as just keeping your vision a little broader and uh, you know Alex is a relatively esoteric guy you know in terms of like you know the whole philosophy behind his vision and everything and I think of myself as being a pretty rational grounded kind of person but I can still really relate to what he's talking about because he's talking about in 
uh, things in broad metaphors that, that reach deeply into some fairly abstract places. And I, I grasp what he's getting at, you know, it's even, even though the language I would use might be a little different or whatever. And uh, I definitely really, really relate to his art. Uh, he's inspiring also in the sense that, you know, it's like 60 and, and he's going out there and, and taking it head on, you know what I mean? Uh, traveling every other weekend all over the world, performing live, uh, you know, in front of all these people and, you know, with loud music everywhere and then he's on another airplane to another continent and, you know, just constantly. So yeah, that's definitely super inspiring. I don't know if I could necessarily keep up with that. But it's cool to see someone that can. You know, it's kind of in the same sense that I'm really inspired by Dali because he produced some of his most epic works later in his life. You know, he, he wasn't one of those artists who had this amazing moment in his early young years when he was hungry and, you know, hadn't gotten all conservative yet. You know, he, just, he kept it up his whole life. He's always trying new things, things that the rest of the art world found unorthodox, and he just couldn't care less, you know. He's like, I am Salvador Dali, I do whatever I want. And um, I think that's awesome. Yeah, Alex is doing a lot of really like large scale, really amazing work right now. He's also really embraced the fact that people get his work tattooed. And you know, like they've got a place at the website where they post people's Alex Gray tattoos and the book he put out recently, uh, Net of Being. There's a couple pages of Alex Gray tattoos. There's one for both, both of you. If you could go back in time and meet one historical figure, who would it be? Really? Yeah, really. That's a good one. Yeah. I, actually, a, a different version of that asked during one of the hypercasts was if there are any artists from the, the past that you would collaborate with. I thought that was a good one. Just, just as hard to answer, though. You know, I mean, if you've been that influenced by somebody who's, who you know is dead, you know, and all of a sudden you have to meet them, I just think that would be too much. It's like, hello, Mr. Da Vinci. You, you freaking rock, man. Uh, um, that didn't come out right. Yeah, I don't know. So Jeff, if you could do a collaboration in any medium with any historical figure, who would it be? I don't know. <laughs> I can't even think like that. <laughs> Frank Frazetta? I don't know. Frank Frazetta was not into tattoos. People would come into the Frazetta Museum and show him tattoos of his stuff, and he'd be like, get that out of here. Really? Yeah. Kind of a shame, you know, as compared to, like, Alex Gray or, or Giger, who loves to see his stuff tattooed. Yeah. Not everyone's going to get it.
Sorry about this. Yeah, we're just gonna wait till we're ten hours in, and I'm gonna start pounding on the elbow. <laughs> What time is your seminar tomorrow? Um, noonish. We're gonna try to start stenciling and stuff at noon. Mm. So I was planning on being here about 10:30 mm -hmm. to prep and everything. one you've answered before, but it will probably increase it. But what, what's the artistic medium, in your opinion, resembles most of the tattooing medium? Prisma color pencils. Hmm. In terms of the kind of hand movements that you use, and um, you know the the way that you saturate by using the same sort of overlapping pencil strokes. I think there's a lot of. Uh, comparisons and I feel like I've evolved my tattooing technique over the course of doing a lot of Prismacolor drawings. Early in my career I did a lot of full color renderings. That's one of the reasons why it's a great medium for an apprentice to do a set of flash with.
Prisma color. I do a lot of digital stuff. I don't know how. I have a lifelong sort of weird relationship with computers. I programmed them when I was younger. I almost once took a job as a junior programmer at Argonne National Laboratory. That was my alternate life. <clears throat> but no, it's mostly all Photoshop stuff with a a little bit of 3D thrown in. I can't get my iPhone to work. I also do a lot of video, educational stuff, and then, you know, the hypercasts, anybody that's seen those, I've done all the editing on those because I'm a weird control freak when it comes to stuff that I put out. And that video is probably the one artistic medium that's the least like tattooing. Gotta come in here. By the way, guy, your editing on those hypercasts this makes a world of difference. Well, oh, thank you. Yeah, we got another one that's just about ready to go. I just need to insert a couple more images. That was tattooing past, present, and future. And the other one that uh, we've done since then, I still need to edit, which is the tattoo press. And the next one after that, which will be late this month, is uh, art degrees in tattooing which is part of the changing landscape. And so if anyone, anyone here is listening and has an art degree, is a tattoo artist, and would like to <laughs> submit work for critique for that episode, please do. Perfect time of night for this question. Do you think that the symbology of a tattoo actually has an effect on the recipient? An effect on the what? The um, well, you know, if it means something to them, they're looking at it every day and it affirms that. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And that's why I think that the tattoos that you get should be about where you want to be, not necessarily the place you're stuck in right now, you know? If, yeah. you're, if you're living a miserable existence or whatever and you're trying to transcend that, you get a tattoo about the transcendence, not about the misery. I agree with that. And when you look at it every day, it affirms that. It, you know, reinforces whatever it is that the tattoo is saying, for better or for worse.
Hey, if uh, folks are still watching and they have an Instagram or Facebook about it, uh, we only need eight, uh, 90 more people to hit 6,000 total viewers. So mm. uh, go tell your peeps. That is so 2013. Yeah, just acts a superfluous apostrophe and you're all good. <laughs> Hey, Guy, for the uh, new viewers, uh, could you repeat where to submit uh, artwork for critique for Hypercast? All right, yes. Uh, first of all, it is uh, a, a thing where we're, we're literally, like, critiquing four tattoos a month. So, um, and we are getting a fair number of submissions. Please submit anyway, though. We're, uh, we're hoping to critique really exceptional work. Uh, and we've been able to uh, so far. It's all been uh, either already amazing or by people who clearly have potential. Uh, probably the best place to send them to is uh, askguy at guyhson.com. It's a good place. I'll definitely get them. And if you are an arts, uh, art, grad, uh, art school graduate who tattoos, um, Try to get those to us within the next 10 days or so. Make sure they're reasonably high resolution because we're gonna zoom in close during that final edit in high def, so uh, we do need enough pixels. I'm gonna oh. trade places and get this spot up here. Sure. Ready for that. And, um, I guess I'll do just a little rendering in that leg and we can be done. Okay. Ease back to it would be well. Well, this here, <laughs> not really help. here. I will, but it won't help very much. Okay. <laughs> but you know, you have the smell of back team. There's so little to do yeah. up here, really. to uh, show this off. I don't know if this is a good focal length for it. This is our ultra rough sketch that we started with. You can see maybe nothing, but yeah, there's crab, direction of the waves, S curve of the rock. Um, it's about as rough as it gets. It's just enough to say, let's try putting this here, this here, this here, and this here. That's how the initial idea got communicated. Oh. Um. Well. Oh, yeah, leave the plastic You're making stuff a mess. I'll straighten it out a little bit. Look at this mess you've made. What a mess. Cool stuff. Right. It's a decent outline. So yeah, we're pretty much just looking at that. Okay. And I might do a little bit of shading <coughs> in here, if you can handle it. I don't even know how necessary that is, but... I don't want to feel left out. Am 
I plugged in? Probably not. Well, your light isn't. Is this your power? Um, I'm not plugged in. What happened to that? I would have sworn I put. No, I am. Oh, yeah. That old thing. Just this one. All right, I'm going to have you come nope. back just a little bit. Yep. Uh, and I'm going to scooch this over a little bit. Thanks. So lift up. Yep. Thank you. Good, thank you. Oh. Yeah, you know, I'd like to mention to everyone who's tuned in that our record for a number of people tuning into a webcast before was just under a thousand. We're about to hit six thousand. I want to thank you all for making this such a successful event. Wow, that's awesome. I'm hoping at least some of you can tune in tomorrow. And the event that's the second highest attendance after this one was also a Jeff Gogway related <laughs> event. I'm um, I'm a hot ticket. I'm just honored to be here. Me too. I'm really amazed at how how involved you are, guy, with everything, with just how much you share. It's really generous. It's really amazing. It all comes back. Here I, here, here I am complaining about like oh, I don't want to teach anymore. I just want a tattoo. And you're just you're just so devoted to doing so much for the tattoo community. It's awesome. I've gotten more more back from that than I have from anything else that I've ever done, you know, so that's a big incentive. Knowing people are getting a lot out of it and getting such positive feedback. And it's made me a better artist multiple times over again, you know. Mm -hmm. Even just being in a position where you have to explain yourself. You're uh, talking about something you've done a million times and all of a sudden you realize you have no idea what you're doing. And you have right. to really think about it. And you find there's all these gaps in your understanding of the thing that you wouldn't have even known about if you hadn't tasked yourself with explaining it. Right. And then all of a sudden you're standing in front of 40 people going, Ah, uh, I was about to tell you all these great things about tattooing and I have no idea what I'm talking about. Right. And you wing it and they all appreciate it. <laughs> and you try to learn from it. Right. And it's a little nerve wracking at times, but always worth it. More compliments, guy. You are the father of innovative tattooing.
there were definitely big innovators before I came along, but I appreciate the compliment nonetheless. Be part of the evolution, whoever you are. Your contribution matters. Ustreamer236205. That is so 21st century. Somebody earlier was like, man, this is like the chat rooms in the late 2000s. <laughs> Why not? More late night questions. Uh, Guy and Jeff, have you ever given bad advice or advice that you wish you could take back? I, you know, I, I'm I sure. do have a comment on that. <clears throat> I think some people tend to take things way too, I don't know, out of proportion. And it has at times made me nervous to give advice. Like there was one guy who, he was, a, he was tattooing part time and uh, you know, had a regular old day job and um, I thought his work looked promising, you know, but he was definitely at a standstill as far as being able to really evolve was concerned because he was only part time. And I told him, hey man, if you're not ready to give us this year full time, then um, you know, maybe it's not for you. And I said this thinking, you know, I don't know, trying to encourage him to dropped the day job and he did the opposite quit tattooing and you know I never felt good about that but maybe it was the right advice maybe he wasn't ready you know I still don't feel good about it you know but you don't know how people are going to react and really I mean I should feel protective of this industry and if somebody isn't ready to give it at least their full time attention then maybe, maybe it's not for them well, maybe no maybe about it, you know. It deserves your full-time attention. Your clients deserve your full-time attention. They deserve the kind of work that comes from somebody that's giving it their full-time. Yeah. I found my opinion of things have changed over the years, you know, where I was a lot more zealous and hardcore about attaining things and goals and just, you know, wholeheartedly pursuing stuff relentlessly, irrationally, just don't let anyone ever, you know, just all that kind of real motivational, like, just go for it. What and kind then, of absolutist? Yeah. And, yeah. And now I'm just like, 
be patient, you know, be, I would never really say realistic because realistic always seems to be really practical and practical always seems to say, well, what, what, what if all this, all these things went wrong? And in general, I try to live by that. I call it the NASA, the NASA, um, Oh, what is the, I can't remember the word, it's too late. But like the NASA perspective, like there's a million things that have to go perfectly right for it to work. Right. And instead of the practical way of saying, what if something goes wrong? You know, they say, right. what if everything goes right? Yes. And uh, that's how I've always tried to approach things. Like, yeah, it might not be the most rational thing for me to expect this or that, but what if it actually works out? It would be awesome. What if everything goes right? I like that. It's sort of the opposite of Murphy's Law. Kind of fortifying yourself against Murphy's Law. Yeah. And saying to hell with Murphy. What if it works out? Let's make it work. Yeah, that recent nail biter of having the probe that had to shut itself down for two years and then sit there in cold storage, moving it, you know, orbital velocity around the sun, and then counting on it, you know, in absolute zero temperatures to turn itself back on at the right time and send a message, okay, I'm back on again. A billion dollar probe. And it did. Really? You know, it's going to drop a probe on a comet. Pretty neat. You're doing great, man. You might not feel this way right now, but I'm looking forward to the next session. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's going to be great. Having a foundation this like thorough and complete would be good fun to pick back up from.
Do either of you guys have any opinions on eyeball tattoos or other extreme body modifications? Well, I don't know. I mean, especially like the recent trend where you're starting to see a lot more like heavy face work done. Um, that's actually better work. It's not like prison style face work. And I don't know. I just, I just think that it's really extreme. And uh, if you're a really extreme person, then maybe it fits you. Sorry, I didn't mean to wipe that. No, off. no, that's good. But I'm just, I'm a little conservative about that stuff in my old age. I do plan on going a little higher on my neck, but at the same time, I'd rather it just peek out, you know? I don't want to go to a gas station and not be able to make eye contact with the clerk. Um, I know that sounds silly and old-fashioned and conservative, but I am that way a little bit. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. It doesn't, it doesn't uh, affect me much. I really like the I, I like the empowerment of being somewhat heavily tattooed and not overly public about it. I like being able to just put on a long sleeve shirt and go somewhere and, and just not have the assumptions made, whether it's one way or the other. I like when I've had one of my hands tattooed for 25 years, and I've I've found that it doesn't really. I don't think it's that big of a distraction. People see it, you know, uh, but I, I think all the old stigmas are pretty much all gone. Yeah. It's just not distracting the way that like a facial tattoo would be. There's a big difference between knowing somebody's tattooed and having a tattoo that's, you know, I mean, especially a really well done piece that's hard to ignore, that's, you know, sitting right there where your facial expression used to be. <laughs> I don't have, I still have so far to go on the rest of my body that I don't really know for me personally. Well, you know, I'm getting my other hand done day after tomorrow. You I'm are? I'm super psyched about it. Oh. And I'm probably going to go higher on the neck a little bit so that it pokes out, you know, but not so that it yeah. swamps your field of view when I'm try trying to talk to you. So that's kind of where my personal threshold is. and. That's not where I stop for other people necessarily, but uh, you know, if someone wants heavy neck work, you know, I think most of us are kind of in agreement. You know, they've got to already have a lot of tattoo work on them and, and know what it's about to be tattooed. You don't just, you know, put a neck sleeve on 18 year old kid who's enthused mm -hmm. about tattoos for his first time. Right. I don't even know if I could answer that question. I just know when, when my, my sister approached me, I was 16 years old, and she was like, hey, let's go get tattooed. I had never thought about it before that. And suddenly I was obsessed with it, you know? Just obsessed completely, without knowing anything about it or how they were done or anything. There's really been nothing that's ever had that kind of a grip on me. And it's stayed that way. And so I just don't fight it.
I had, uh, in a week before my first tattoo appointment, I had dreams about tattoos every night, about doing tattoos, you know. Never had even seen it done. Yeah. <clears throat> it took over my life from day one. From the moment it mattered to me, it took over my life. So I think I'm going to work this little rock on the elbow and then maybe I'm going to peel away from this. Yeah, I think that it's time. You can keep working as long as you want, but uh, two more hours. <laughs> two more hours. As for me, I got another client waiting. I got to break down set up real quick and cram out another sleeve before I go uh, back to the hotel. Yeah. Okay, it used to be my thing when I was like the last person working on the floor. I'd finish up and there'd be three or four people still standing around and it's like one in the morning and yeah. the convention promoter's yelling at me <clears> and I <throat> put down my machine and go, next! <laughs> They're turning out the lights at midnight. Yeah. Sometimes that's the only way to get people to stop. I used to like the conventions where they just let you work all night if you wanted to. It's a little like convention where we let people work all night until somebody decided to start a tattoo at 11 at night. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait. Do that shit in your room, you know? Because always the last one. And for a while there, Michelle was the last one every time. I wander back in there, the bar's closed. I'm like, hey, I didn't go back. Uh, almost done. Another hour. <laughs> Have I told you lately you're awesome? <laughs> Couple times. Oh. I'll take it though. Well, I don't know how you do it. That's awesome. You probably need to say that to everybody. No. Not everyone can do this. This might be like a month and a half. You know, two more hours. Well, we have to go. What do you say? You guys might be Bob Tyrell and I just belong to that one. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> How long till we beat it? We might go to the main board. It all depends on how long the first video was. But that was all about fun and Bob. Yeah, so you've sat through twice as many hours of tattooing. Yeah, you get to count these hours twice. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, this is like 14 hours. Oh, man. <laughs> you guys start with that tonight? Yep. Yep, we're going to start drawing right away. Three more colors, 
What? Alright man, I am done. I hate to be the one that quits first. No. But somebody's got to. I quit like an hour ago. I... <laughs> All right. I can finish it up. All right. Come on. Mr. Jones and Driscoll, can you finish it up? Okay. We'll do the hard part. They can do a dot each. that will be a four length <laughs> number. <laughs> Got enough of that in there? Or are you gonna shade a little bit more? Or? Yeah, I think that. I mean, it's not gonna make yeah <laughs> any difference right now. Gotta leave one thing obviously unfinished. Oh, you never get him back in the chair. <laughs> Why don't you go ahead and stand up and we'll get so you more great. properly cleaned? Huh? Numbing towel. Yeah, it did its job. Never would have got through that. Let me tell you how it looks. It looks awesome. Thank you, guys. Awesome. <laughs> it looks it looks cool. Yeah, look at the inside. Hmm? Wow, that looks sweet. As well. I think this is the part that would normally just be roughed in, you know, at the end of a long so session. You're dealing like this. with nice people. You know, yeah, it's surprisingly, nice it doesn't even look sore. No. No, it's not even that sore. How's it feel, Jeff? Feel like a tattoo? It's pretty cool, honestly. It's. You got the shakes. It's time to quit. I'm going to take a couple quick photos here. Yeah. Well, I gotta get a full